podcast. So today I'm joined by ESG, who is our first guest. This is going to be something that we do each week now, so I want to get you guys involved. Let us know below in the comments who you want to see appear on the weekly podcast and we can make sure that we get them in as guests. But first of all, we're going to speak to Emma to let, her, let us know who she is and what she is about. So, I'm Miss Emma. Hello, I'm Emma and thank you for having me as the first guest. I feel <laughs> very privileged with this um, opportunity. Um, I work, I'm an online personal trainer, but I also work with Pure Gym to do their Pure Lifestyle course. Um, and I deliver some of the content online and support online and are legendary. Yes, one person did say legendary <laughs> live chats. Um, they are, they really are. Best, best social post we've ever actually done. Th- well, 38,000 people tuned in. <laughs> yeah, and if you enjoy the live chats, then in the Pure Gym group, uh, the Pure Lifestyle group, I also do them weekly with Mr. Anthony Park. So we go over any problems that people are having, sort of common issues people get with losing weight or things that have come up in the group. So that's really a support system for your Pure Lifestyle course. And then what about other things that you do within the fitness community? She's, she's, she's like a podcast... Um, oh yes, yeah, so, I also have my own podcast, which I do with two other brilliant fitness professionals. One of them is actually a GP, but he does dabble in fitness, um, and that's called Fitness Unfiltered. So if you do want to listen to that, please do. Um, and I try to put out good content consistently, uh, try and have a bit more of a science base to that, or at least an explanation behind um, the recommendations that I'm giving and yeah just try and help you guys out on your journeys as much as possible I try and do some exercise ideas as well um, so yeah that's my content so each week we want to talk about topical events and things that happen in the world um, while I've got Emma here today I want to talk about how she thinks people's views on fitness has changed over the last few years body shapes, body sizes, everything down to taking more protein like what what Mm -hmm. how do you as you've been in this industry for quite a while now how do you think things have changed throughout the last years well that's a huge topic but i think to sort of narrow it down and just because i guess it's topical for now but victoria's secret special yes that was that was and i saw someone had posted something up and it was kind of saying like you know are we really still doing this in 2018 Mm. like is this still a thing like skinny girls walking around and I put that up and I thought I wanted to see if people sort of agreed or disagreed with that. And I really liked the response I got from it because it was people basically said, Do you know what, there's enough room for everyone yeah. at the moment. You know, yeah. If you want to look that certain way, that's absolutely fine. If you don't, that's absolutely fine. And someone brought up a good point that, you know, if they weren't skinny models, would we have anyone saying anything? Mm, and it's true. It's really yeah. true. You have to worry like is yeah. it is it sensible dieting or are they crash dieting? Well, one is it sensible dieting and is it something that we want to celebrate yeah. and like that body shape to be celebrated yeah. because it's actually probably very unrealistic for most people. I agree. But if we see it as what it is, which is sort of an extreme, mm. um, that you know that wants to be celebrated in the fashion world, mm. I don't know. I think I think a lot of social media now comes down to us being a bit more critical of actually what goes on behind that. I think like the modelling industry, um, I think it has changed, like obviously there's um, brands like Pretty Little Thing and, and they're doing like plus size ranges and stuff now, so I think it has almost been celebrated to be anybody shape and obviously with Pure Gym we're like everybody welcome, so you know, I don't yeah. think it's the same like strict regime. What do you think about people that do um, shows, because I know like I've had experience where being around people are training different gyms and a lot of them are tr- competing for shows where they're like every week losing more and more calories and then they're not having any carbs and they're drinking loads of water and taking water away and you know all this kind of like really crazy stuff that they do to their bodies then they get to the show day they do the show day and then after that they go back to normal sorry <laughs> <laughs> then they go back to normal if you want to take it to the extreme like that's your choice you yeah. can do it but i think having a plan for after and realizing that it is you know a short period of time yeah. like a lot of people are like, oh my god, you're only on X amount of calories, like how on earth? Right, but it's for two weeks. Yeah. You know, and then I have a plan to increase my calories mm. and come off that. But you're right, a lot of people don't do that. They just think, I'll get really, really lean and then don't think about how they're going to put on after yeah. the consequences of Is that. Is that like, do you think that's good for their actual bodies though, like to keep 
but it, it's almost like yo-yo dieting in a way it's like crash dieting yeah. because you are like limiting your body to so much nutrients and whatever that it, obviously people take supplements and stuff but it's not mm. it's not the same as it of having like a continuous consistent plan that you stick to each week and you know you're eating what you want and you're having enough calories to sustain your lifestyle so it's a goal for some people yeah. if, if that's what you're into and you want to do it that's fine yeah. like you could take the same extreme as like any anything taken to extreme is not healthy anymore what we were saying like has fitness changed in the last couple mm. of years and i don't know if it it's hard to see when you're in it like we're yeah. kind of in it but i do feel like there's a more of a move towards it's the sort of strong beat skinny yeah um, yeah and like what you can do as opposed to just how you look yeah and true. i think actually crossfit's helped a lot with that yeah I, something i've never done is crossfit i'm actually really interested in it because this is the thing that you, you kind of hear people that you know get in shape for a magazine cover or you know men's health for instance there's so many guys that will be like I've literally worked to look like that I'm not the strongest so mm. a lot of the guys that are really really strong it's not about aesthetics it's a lot to do with strength and then obviously aesthetics follows because they are incredibly lean because they're training so much but like CrossFit I think it's just it is all it's like yeah ama amazing it is amazing like seeing what your body can do and also yeah. that being I think that's such a strong motivator yeah. is to move away from oh, I just want to look this way to, like, what can my body do? Yeah. And you'll often find that actually you look better when you start focusing on performance. Yeah, I think you keep going for longer. Also, for me, when I lost a lot of weight, it was almost, again, like, what I wanted to look like. And then after a while, you get to that stage and you're like, right, I've done that now, so what's next? And, mm -hmm. you know, then you start going, right, how much more can I lift? Or how many more reps of that can I do? And how long can I go for? Or how long can I run for? And then yeah. it becomes more about your fitness levels. And that's when it... I think is it more substantial that like you can actually keep going to doing that rather than yeah it's a more meaningful yeah. goal I feel yeah um, but again I feel like people sort of grow into that or I know I did yeah, like so. when I first started I was like oh yeah I just want to have good abs and yeah. like a certain way and that's like well done that yeah. and actually it's quite it's, it is quite a fickle pursuit definitely like, I want to look this way but yeah. now it's like what can I do with my body and it's so much more empowering to think how strong can I get how fast can I run like, yeah what is my body capable of? Like yeah. that's a really like cool thing. That's it. I think I like um, contests like Tough Mudder and mm. um, Abby Dashers and things like that. Like mm. they're they're good and stuff. I think that's obviously it's always happened, but I think it's more that like everyday people think actually I'll go and do ten k this yeah. weekend, and I think it's more acceptable for people to do that rather than before where it was like oh no that's what like athletic people to, yeah. to do that. Yeah. So I think that's a good movement. But then how do you think that the female industry is moving fitness industry? Because obviously we've got brands and um, like fashion brands that have taken over the industry and a lot of Instagram accounts and stuff are, are people that you know might look really aesthetic and they look great in what they're wearing and that's a big account because people are interested in looking like them but then there's not really any like obviously you mentioned before like your facts are all very science based mm -hmm. and you can really tell that you know what you're talking about is it quite dangerous these people like giving advice to people yes it is basically <laughs> and in a there's nutshell. like loads of plans and stuff that can come by and things you think you yeah know, it's quite and dangerous. it's like you have absolutely no you know some of them aren't even gym instructors mm. or have like you know but, you know maybe they've started with a personal trainer for like a couple of weeks and then suddenly yeah. they're like giving out all this diet advice which mm. is completely wrong or yeah. you know setting these like rigid rules that don't make any sense behind them mm. and I guess that's what we try and do with pure lifestyle is like look at these rules and yeah, do you know what it will work? Like not eating after six pm or not eating after dinner will work for most people because that is when you normally overeat. Yeah. But you knowing why allows you that flexibility. Yeah. So you're like, okay, well actually it hits seven o'clock, but I can eat this because mm -hmm. I know that calories aren't inherently more fattening after seven o'clock. Yeah. It's just that that's when I tend to yeah. overeat. Yeah, mindless eating. And yeah. Sprint on the sofa, not really thinking about it. But yeah. you maybe get like a celeb saying, "Oh, I only do this," or I. I'm going on a ketogenic diet yeah. or, you know, these sort of really extremes and, and people think, oh, I need to do that yeah. to, Lose to get the same yeah. results and it's completely not true. Or the other side, which is kind of just us as, like, consumers being dumb, is, like, so-and-so who's always been in amazing shape mm. suddenly starts using X supplements. Yeah. yeah, and that's now why they got in amazing shape. You're like, oh, well, I'm going to get that. that. And yeah. <laughs> You think actually take a step back, like they've always looked like that, yeah. and now suddenly they're yeah. endorsing this. Like, there's something not quite right there. Yeah, 
But to be sort of even keeled here, there's, it's actually really good that some of these sort of bigger celebrities are getting involved in fitness because yeah. it's an audience that maybe wouldn't normally... Yeah, like Kim Kardashian, for instance. Yeah, like yeah. she's obviously been promoting that she does weight training. I think on the show, she's promoting that she trains hard, she does weight training every day, she's consistent with her workouts. And for me, I think that's really positive mm -hmm. for a lot of women that might not have... Um, you know, ever set foot in the gym or found weight training very intimidating. She looks great from doing it. You can definitely tell she's doing it because she's toned. You know, mm -hmm. she's showing mus muscle definition. Whereas before, I don't know. Like it's almost like you take these supplements and um, shakes and stuff, and then you look great. And it's not. You can just tell that they yeah. they look. They just don't look the same. They're not. They're not muscular toned. Well, it's kind of that like skinny fat. Like I yeah. would say, if you diet and don't exercise, you sort of get. Like yeah. you don't get the same Watery. physique that you want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You don't get that toned physique. Yeah. Um, so it is amazing that people like Kim Kardashian are sort of promoting that. And yeah, not everything she promotes is great, but it is an audience that, you know, you could say, oh, go follow this, like, I don't know, someone like me who's science with. I don't have anywhere near the same, like, exposure as any yeah. of these people. So it's great that, like, people with that audience are now promoting just exercise yeah. in general. I think before when I was younger I was that person that did slimming tablets and shakes and all that kind of thing because I wasn't educated in mm -hmm. fitness. I didn't know that like, this was the way to you want that quick fix. Yeah you do want um, a quick fix and it would I'd get like a quick fix for like two weeks before I went on holiday and I'd look great and then the next thing I'd go on holiday and I'd look worse than before because I'd just literally binge because I've been so hungry. Whereas if you just literally you know control your calories, move more, go don't take the lift, take the yeah. stairs, park a bit further away, you will actually see such dramatic weight loss and then you're the thinking how has this happened yeah. you're like my clothes fit really well what's going on and it's literally because you're just moving more eating less mm -hmm. a healthy lifestyle like that's mm -hmm. that's the thing that works and you know i've been the same with social media where like i've taken advice from personal trainers like, i'm not a trained personal trainer at all and then i've shared my advice but i think it's really clear from my profile that i'm not a personal trainer mm -hmm. what advice i'm giving is when people ask me and i'm giving my own you know experience but that's not going to work for everybody that's just what's worked for me and i think it's quite dangerous when you see people and like follow this eating plan this is what i eat and it's like well you could be six foot ten i'm five foot two so it's complete like that's not enough calories for that person or you look at like someone might say to me oh what is i remember when i was working in london like a lot of people be like oh what is it you eat i'll just eat the same and then yeah, i'll look yeah, like you yeah. and it's like well i you know train at least once a day yeah walk to work and do maybe like 10,000 steps. I'm also a personal trainer, so I'm always on my feet. I've got on, like, you know, I'd get in some exercise between clients, maybe I'd be like warming yeah, up. Yeah, very a bit. active. You, there's no way you, as an office-based person, no. could eat the same as yeah. me and get, you know, and look the same. So, yeah, I think knowing the context and then delivering things like exactly how you are, like, this is really, you know, really worked for me. It might, might help you, but, yeah. This is like what I found that doing this regime or this like it was helpful to me, but I'm not. Yeah. You know, I'm not a professional. And yeah, I think that's what's important because I think there's there's two different aspects to that because if if you're a person then you you have changed your life by exercising and you do love it then you should 100 percent talk mm -hmm. about it and although a lot of professionals do say you know if you don't know what you're talking about don't say anything which to some extent I I think is right but then also if you can inspire somebody who was in the same mindset as you and they've seen that you can do it, then what, why would you not talk about it? So oh, I don't yeah. like a it, it is a bit of a, <laughs> like, there's two sides, but yeah. I completely agree, like, share your experience, yeah. but just share it in a way that's like, okay, well, this is I'm not professional, it worked for me. There might be a million ways that you could do it, but yeah. this is the way that worked for me and maybe it's going to help you. Yeah. And I definitely think share your stories. And yeah. I, I was speaking to someone today about sort of this, like, imposter syndrome or... What I describe as is like the more you know, the more you realise you don't know. Oh so God, you sort lit. of go through these phases of like, <laughs> yeah. oh, you just start and doing like, oh, I know quite a lot about yeah, this. I'm expert. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I lost a bit of weight. I think I know what I'm talking yeah. about now. Yeah. I'm going to share my experience. Yeah. And then you delve a little deeper and you're like, oh my God, I know nothing. Yeah. But then you're like, you do actually know a little bit more then. But then you're, yeah. you're reluctant to share because you're like, yeah. oh, I know that there's a lot more people that know no, a, lot a lot more, more. than me. Yeah. And, you know, I'm in the same position. I'm like, I know that, like, because I have worked in science before, I'm like, I know these people that know a hell of a lot more mm. than me. But they're not sharing what they know at the moment, and they're maybe not sharing it in a way that's, like, understandable to the general yeah, population. So yeah. you kind of sit in that middle ground. Yeah. But, you know, I'm always more than happy to be questioned and discuss. And I think we were going to come on to this, but who you follow, you should make sure that they're sort of happy to change their mind. Yeah. Given, or, you know, if I said... 
okay, well, I think that you should cut carbs. Like, if someone's like, why? You, you realise if someone's like, oh, because that's what I do. And that, like, yeah. I've always done that and they're quite, like, defensive. Probably not someone you want to follow if they're like, oh, okay, well, it worked for me and this research says this and blah, blah, blah. But there are other ways you could do it or can explain their stance. Mm. Those are the sort of yeah. people that... Yeah, I agree, yeah. definitely. Um, so one thing we're going to talk about is... Um, who do you think is a good fitness role model for women? So obviously we've been discussing about how things have changed with the fitness industry for women. I know there is a lot of women out there in the fitness industry that I would probably be quite happy with my kids when I do have them to look up to them and be like, you know, I want to be like her, the CrossFitter or an athlete. Like, you know, there's a lot of um, respectable athletes out there that mm -hmm. train really hard and, and like you say, know what they're talking about. But is there anyone in particular that stands out for you that you wanted to like, give a shout out to? Well, there are a few people I want to give a shout out to. But then I think role models in general are quite a... Uh, like, it's almost a strange concept. Like, mm -hmm. nobody's perfect. No, definitely And not. It is, it's great to have people to look up to, but realising that fitness is often something that someone does. It's not necessarily who mm -hmm. they are. And there's been a few instances of that in the fitness industry where someone who maybe puts out great information in, in the fitness industry is great, but actually, in their personal life, lacks a lot of morals. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. There, yeah. there needs to be that distinguish distinction. But also... Uh, yeah, I don't know, it is a hard one. So you want to look up to them maybe just for their fitness. Yeah, you want to know that they know what they're talking about and, mm. you know. But it's, yeah, I think I'm against putting someone on a pedestal because actually, mm. and also they don't, they haven't put themselves there. So yeah. often people are like, oh, we expect you to be a role model, but they didn't want Yeah, they didn't want it, yeah. yeah yes. But anyway, good people to follow <laughs> on uh, fitness are, who did we just discuss? Okay. Emilia Thompson, yeah. she puts out brilliant infographics and she's very science based, she's got a PhD, she's more than happy to discuss what she's suggesting, yeah. um, I've had a good few discussions with her, we've had her on a live, um, yeah so she's really like open to discussion, yeah. discussing things and there's actually loads of people but depending on the niche that you're what looking you at, so yeah. that, you know if it's for exercise ideas, I follow this woman called Kaiser and she's awesome she like loads of different exercise ideas and i like to sort of mix things up don't like see the same stuff again and again yeah. so that it, last week you posted about doing sarah holden's um yeah so, i mean <laughs> follow sarah holden because so she gets up crazy <laughs> but some of them are like ridiculous uh, honestly so, i tried to hear myself i'm like what's well, just a machine sarah did what was it it was basically like a, a mountain climber in into the splits so, crazy you know, do be careful when you try these things because yeah. I <laughs> pulled my groin doing that. Um, I think there's, there's a show in itself of watching Emma recreate <laughs> Sarah Holden's exercises because it yeah. was really great. If you've not seen it, you should definitely go check it yeah, out. Yeah, it's on my Instagram somewhere if you want to find that. <laughs> but um, I'm the same, like, a lot of the videos that I share of Sarah, I just they're like so extreme that I know like not not a lot of our pure gym mm. audience would be able to do them because I definitely can't do them but it's almost aspirational because obviously there's so many different people that come to pure gym I don't just want to show people at the start of their journey in the middle of the journey you know there's there's a lot of people that need that next push almost yeah and it, people get bored of the same yeah. exercises and it's like if you wanted yeah. to watch someone doing the bench press you could just like it's YouTube true, that it's and true. you kind of know that that's an exercise that yeah. already whereas yeah. you're like oh doesn't know that you could yeah, I like that. Um, <laughs> a mountain climber into the splits. <laughs> so, you know, that was an interesting one. Yeah, I know my, my partner, he follows Ulysses. Have you seen Ulysses? Yeah. Before? Yeah. And he's the same, because we always discuss that from obviously social media's perspective, but that's my job. Like, what he's, my, my partner, he's been training for years, he used to be an athlete, so he's always looking for, like, the next thing, the, the next thing to, like, inspire him. So he's not going to follow somebody that's quite, like, not, I would say generic, but kind of like a beginning of their fitness journey, or you know, somebody that's talking to that that person. He wants somebody like Ulysses. It's just like yeah. extreme, like just ripped up, shredded, and again, like can almost teach you something yeah. the next level. So and I guess we're talking about goals and things. Like you yeah. need to sort of have things that are going to keep pushing you. Like mm. I don't know, I'll see something. Like, oh yeah, I really want to learn how to do like a one-handed push-up. Like that's <laughs> yeah. my next thing. Yeah, like, I think it keeps it. Yeah. Like you, the consistency going because it's almost like a little game with yourself, isn't it? Like mm. if you go, you, like I don't know about you guys, but I've gone to the gym so many times and had the same like plan that I've been doing. Then after a while, each week it's got less and less enthusiastic, yeah. and I'm just like, I'm over this. I'm just kind of walking around the gym, listening to my music, not really doing anything. You so kind of get in yeah. that zone, but like then it's just 
you get a bit you plateau yeah. massively, no yeah. changes whatsoever. So yeah, um, so yeah, we've just kind of touched on um, social media a little bit, but I want to talk a little bit further with Emma about this. So obviously, my role at Pure Gym is social media manager. So I see a lot of different reactions to some of the stuff that we share, and you know, sometimes we are unlucky to have people trolling which really upsets me in my role because obviously I'm choosing to, to share these people with our audience and you know sometimes these, these things do happen so it's something that we really strongly feel at Pure Gym is not acceptable and we, we, don't, we don't tolerate it at all but obviously out there in the social world it happens every day you know reality stars get it consistently but then also fitness professionals do. And again, sometimes it can be from other fitness professionals. Yeah. So, you know, P PT industry is quite a competitive industry, so you can... Big you, egos. Yeah, big yeah. egos in there. So I'm just going to you know, touch on that with you. I know that you and... Um, I mentioned Sarah again, but you and Sarah Holden, you spoke about this in one of your mm. um, live chats about that she got trolled about um, her pregnancy yeah. and working out throughout her pregnancy, which, you know, she's explained that and she's a fitness professional. She knows what she's doing and that's why she was doing it. She wasn't promoting for other people to, to start yeah. training it's that like unsolicited opinion that yeah yeah and I, I just think if you've got something to say like make sure you 100% know what you're going to say like there's so many times where people leave a comment on the peer gym page it's like oh that person's not really lost that weight it's like have you actually like clicked on yeah. that person have you actually like looked into what they're doing I always take criticism like if, if it was a troll and someone had just been like your forehead looks big they're like <laughs> thanks thanks for this thing. um <laughs> <laughs> like that doesn't bother me I yeah. just sort of like you know what people are going to write weird yeah. stuff that's fine but the fact that it was a negative comment that it, that kind of did hit me I was like mm, am I doing something wrong here it makes you mm. question what what yeah. you do so I think that they're useful in the sense that it might change how you the, yeah. how you approach things I think as well though like I've noticed a trend in the last few years especially with influencers and bloggers and things you're almost like scared to say some things too much sometimes because of those comments so again I agree like if it's coming in a negative negative word or negative comment and it actually could be harmful to someone then yeah fair enough yeah. but sometimes it, it, you can't almost breathe like people are like oh you've done that wrong yeah. oh that's not right oh, they, and it's like well I'll not share anything then and then yeah. it kind of like stops people from helping people because it, it's almost too much that like you literally feel like you can't breathe because if you don't say the right thing and then follow them they're actually doing something really good for you so it's not for everyone mm -hmm. but I just I really disagree with trolling and I think it can make people you know there's been uh, cases this year where you know people have committed suicide big reality tv stars because they've been trolled so much and it's just so sad because people don't actually associate the person that they're doing this to is a real person. They or that they're going to read those comments. Like, yeah. you would absolutely never say that to someone never. in your life. But yet never. you think that you can say it online. Yeah. And it can be so damaging. It's like I'm, I think I'm quite lucky that I don't put myself out there that much to be trolled. And if I, you know, if it ever is sort of trolling, or I see more as negative comments, like mm -hmm. it's often just asking for like, you know, stupid words. I was just like, this is wrong. And I'm like, Okay, well, if you want to ask for about it and yeah. you want to discuss with me, yeah. that's absolutely fine. Yeah. But if you just want to say this is wrong because of some, I don't know, blog post that has no references, then, like, I'm not going to debate with you. Yeah. Um, but often, for me anyway, it's they're disagreeing with an idea or a concept or a theory, so that's not a personal attack. Mm. But I get that a lot of people put up, I don't know, personal things, or they're more of, like, a celebrity, and those comments can yeah. be really damaging to people we always want like con constructive just, criticism yeah, so exactly. that's good but yeah trolling on the other end where it's just like mean yeah mean and just pointless yeah. but i kind of like it's it says a lot more about the, the troll person, yeah, than it definitely. does you and it's like I what i don't get it i can't understand like what possesses somebody yeah. to think I know what I'm going to do today. I'm yeah. going to get up, have my cup of tea, I'm going to troll everybody on social media. I mean, like, who actually has the time to it? Like, if I see something I don't like on social media, normally, scroll. yeah, I'll scroll past it. Or if I really don't like it, I'll unfollow the person. Mute. Do you know that on Instagram you can mute people? There you go. If I don't see like something that I see, I just think, don't want to be awkward and like unfollow them. Yeah. So I'll just be like, mute. Yeah. But, I don't mean, have to know. <laughs> it's the same thing with the kind of when we come back to the thing I put about Victoria's Secret models. Like, if you don't like it, it's not for you. Don't yeah. follow it. Like, you don't have to like everything yeah. that is there. That's like, a, another thing as well. I've, I've heard a few people say that, you know, they'll follow, like, fitness girl accounts or, you know, models that are really, like, aesthetic. And it makes them feel really insecure in themselves. So, you just don't follow them. Yeah. Just don't follow them. If it makes you feel rubbish, don't follow it. It, it will work wonders for your mental yeah. health. Just yeah. don't do it. 
But then again, if you, like you find someone inspiring and they're helping you like get your butt off the sofa and go to the gym, then follow them. They're actually doing something really good for you.